Their performances were all outstanding. Here are the nominees for best performance by an actor in a leading role. Don Cheadle in Hotel Rwanda. Johnny Depp in Finding Neverland. Leonardo DiCaprio in The Aviator. Clint Eastwood in Million Dollar Baby. Jamie Foxx in Ray. And the Oscar goes to Jamie Foxx and Ray. This is the first Academy Award and second nomination for Jamie Foxx. He's the tenth person to be nominated in both acting categories in the same year. I guess we got to do it again. Oh, ah, uh, yeah, you ready? That's to Ray Charles. Give it up for Ray Charles and his beautiful legacy, and thank you, Ray Charles, for living. I got so many people to thank tonight, and first, I'm gonna start it out with Taylor Hackford. Taylor, you took a chance, man. I mean, that love for Ray Charles was deep down in the earth somewhere, and you opened it up, and it's cracked open, and it's spilling, and. Everybody is drowning in this love, and I thank you for taking a chance on this film, and thank you for waiting 15 years to get me to do it. Uh, I want to thank you. I want to thank uh, Crusader. I want to thank, I want to thank my my agents. I want to thank Rick Kurtzman. I want to thank uh, Kim Hodgett. I want to thank uh, Steve Smoot. I want to thank my managers, Jamie King and Marcus King. Let's uh, let's live this African American dream. It's beautiful. I'm glad I'm with you, and I ain't never leaving you. So I love you. Uh, I got a chance to meet a whole lot of people experiencing this, uh, and other people I want to thank. I want to thank my, my sister, four foot eleven, uh, of, of nothing but pure love. I want to thank my daughter for telling me just before I got up here, if you don't win, Dad, you're still good. <laughs> I'm just look, I just see Oprah and I see Hallie, I just want to say your names. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk to you later, both of you. <laughs> uh, because Oprah got a, uh, allowed me to meet somebody uh, by the name of Sidney Poitier. And uh, yes, Sidney Poitier said, I saw you once and I looked in your eyes and there was a connection. And he says, I give to you responsibility. So I'm taking that responsibility tonight. And uh, thank you, Sydney. Um, this is the, this is probably going to be the toughest part of this the speech. My daughter shares uh, uh, my my grandmother's name, uh, Marie. My grandmother's name is Estelle Marie Talley, and she's not here tonight. And this is going to be the toughest part. But she was my first acting teacher. She told me, "Stand up straight, put your shoulders back, act like you got some sense." We would go places and I would wild out. And she says, act like you've been somewhere. Uh, and then when I would act a fool, she would, she would beat me. She would whoop me. And she could get an Oscar for the way she whooped me because she was great at it. And after she whipped me, she would talk to me and tell me why she whipped me. Said, I want you to be a Southern gentleman. And uh, she still talks to me now. Only now she talks to me in my dreams. And I can't wait to go to sleep tonight because we've got a lot to talk about. I love you.
on Adult Swim, Black Jesus. Put your hands together, start clapping, start clapping, start clapping. Give it up for Charlie Murphy. I appreciate Charlie Murphy for having me here Absolutely. at the Theater. I'm gonna do is think of I'm live here right now at the Howard Theater. Charlie Murphy's killing it all weekend. What's up, y'all? This is your girl, Dr. Ashley Brown, and we're here at the legendary Howard Theater in Washington, D.C. with stand-up comedian, actor, writer, producer, voiceover artist, Charlie Murphy. Charlie Murphy! <laughs> I wanted to say it like that. I was like, oh, he probably gets that all the time. Well, I said it because, you know, you messed up. So <laughs> Absolutely. Great show tonight. Thank you, thank you. How is DC treating you? How you feeling? As usual, it's love, man. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. I come, I've been coming in for 12 years, and it's been the same wow. way the whole time. So. Absolutely. You know, much love to you all, DC, for that. Yeah, and right on back, because, I mean, I, I remember, you know, seeing you on the Chappelle show, and I appreciate that work. Right. Uh, could you could you tell us a little bit about um, Black Jesus, the sitcom? And Black Jesus. Your work there? Ex actually, we're to episode five now. Okay, okay. Five episodes have gone. Yes. Black Jesus, was, it was like... Uh, I feel like I'm back in, back in, back in the saddle in the Chappelle Show type situation because of the creative writing of Aaron McGruder okay. and uh, Absolutely. Know, Mike Clattenburg and then the cast that we got. We got, we got John Pops Witherspoon, we got uh, Corey Holcomb, we got D.C. Curry, we got Dominique, we got uh, Charlie Murphy. I mean, that's five different comedians casting on one TV show. Absolutely. And everybody else that's on the show, Andre Fuller, Antoine Tanner, uh, Callie Hawk, you know, King Bach, all of them are hilarious as well. So when they put them all together, I had to ask them, how'd you come up with, how'd you know to, to put all those people together? Absolutely. I think that's brilliant in itself that he did that. I yeah. mean, Aaron Magruder, he's an awesome writer, mm -hmm. awesome talent. So he like, thinks outside the box. Yeah, absolutely. So so what's your what's your favorite between voiceover, film? I mean, you've got a long list of filmography. <laughs> <laughs> the, That's the, my favorite. Absolutely. You know, whichever way it's coming, I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and you address some like uh, real so social issues tonight, like you, you some major. That's my style of comedy. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I, you know, I'm not 21. No. I'm, a, I'm one of the older guys, so you know what I'm saying. When I, when I go up there, I feel I have to just be yourself and talk about, you know, what what you really want to talk about. You know, President Obama is bombing Iraq again. Israel just finished bombing Palestine. Russia is bombing the Ukraine. Japan wants to bomb China. North Korea wants to bomb South Korea. And with all this bombing and bomb threats going on, we have the audacity to have a $300 billion probe up on Mars searching for signs of life. Like, what are they going to do if the Martians just show up and be like, yeah, motherfucker, you found me. What's up? It ain't shit up in this motherfucker. Let's go back to your place. It's real easy to go up and tell joke, 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 but you, know, mm -hmm. you want to be separated from everybody else. You got to take some risks. So I do take risks. I know one day I might go up there and say something and get shot on stage, but yeah, that's how I go. Yeah, I see you creating your man. Yeah, but you got to keep it real. <laughs> I keep it real. I keep it real. That's, yeah. why I, that's why I respect the, the mm -hmm. big ups and, and rest in peace, Joan Rivers. Because Absolutely. Joan Rivers was one of the real. She kept it real, man. Mm -hmm. She was not trying to be politically correct. She was trying to be funny. And that's what comedy is about. Absolutely. So, so on that note, is there anything that you would say to, you know, upcoming comedians, new actors? Uh, yeah, have a tough beard. That's what I say to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you know, the world is changing, you know what I'm saying? Tough skin. Uh, 15, 20 years ago, we didn't have Twitter and Facebook and social media like you have now. Mm -hmm. And it's a whole different game now, you know, because of that. Absolutely. So, um, but where can everyone find you now? I mean, I've, I've checked out your website, but could you let the people know where to find you? And... Uh, on Twitter, at Charlie Murphy. Okay. On Facebook, Charlie Murphy Comedy. Absolutely. And Twitter, Facebook, and, uh, oh, my, um, my, my uh, podcast, Charlie Murphy Presents. 
uh, which is my weekly podcast. Check that out on SoundCloud. Absolutely. Uh, check it out. I have some great guests on there. I appreciate you again. Thank you for coming to my hometown. <laughs> and we appreciate this. Having. Thank you. Thank you Respect. so much. Yeah. All right, turn the lights <laughs> off. <laughs> and the neighbors calling down to the plane, complaining. Right. Like we did it, talking about how we didn't do our job correctly. And then we get complaints and warnings from our boss. Then after the warning comes the demerit. Right. And when you get to three demerits, you know what happened then? A nigga lose his job! Oh, God. Take me the scenic route. This motherfucker took me to the Iverson Mall. <laughs> I was walking around that mall like, wow, this mall is very fucked up. Man, I was, I was on a plane. I, I, was coming, I was coming from overseas, and uh, I don't know how this guy got a machine gun on the plane, but he stood up, man. He said, everybody, get on the fucking ground. Nobody look at my face. I started freaking out because he was Chinese. I was like, why is he talking like that? <laughs> he was screaming and crying. I was the only brother on the plane. Well, I, I thought I was the only brother. I looked over, there was one other black dude. He was from Nigeria. I, I looked over to him, he was looking right in my face, man. He didn't say two words to me, he just looked at me, he was like. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't need to talk, I knew just what he was talking about. I looked right back at him, I was like. <laughs> Some white dudes on the front of the plane seen us, they were like, oh my God. I think those black guys are gonna try to save us. <laughs> we were just communicating that we understood the situation. We were both seeing the same thing. What we understood was simple. Terrorists don't take black hostages. <laughs> That's the truth. I have yet to see one of us on the news reading the hostage letters. Um, mm. They is treating us good. Uh, we all chilling and shit. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Ray Ray and Big Steve and uh, Jason Newport. You're not gonna see it. And terrorists are smart. They know what they're doing there, you know. They're terrorists. They know black people's bad bargaining chips. <laughs> they called the White House. Hello? We have got five black... Hello? 